All right, folks, we are filming and we are going to be taking this motorcycle, which as you uh, atheists believe it just popped out of a explosion with no intelligent design whatsoever. Now for the Christians, you know that this motorcycle is a product of intelligent design. So we're gonna get on, we're gonna talk about Kanye West. You know how Kanye West says he wants to be a Christian now. And we're also going to talk about Donald Trump, the impeachment, and we're going to be talking about the shock of God challenge. You know, there's only less than 30 days, uh, I would say a few weeks, till we get to 2020 and the atheists are going to fail the shock of God challenge again. So we are taking the Kawasaki Z1000 and this is just an epic motorcycle. It has the a Kropovic exhaust on it. So we'll give you a listen. Let's get on. And we gotta hurry because I have another appointment. All right, let's begin. So first let's talk about Kanye West. So you hear how Kanye West says he wants to become a Christian. He's a Christian. And so you have different people saying different things that he's not really a Christian and whatnot. So I think we should pray for Kanye West. All right, we're going up to the twisties here. We're going to show you some stuff. This motorcycle just handles so well. So we should pray for Kanye West. Hold on. I see yellow. That was yellow. And um, we're going to talk about the Shock of God Challenge. Then we're going to talk about why I believe the next Democrat president should be impeached. That's right. We must impeach the next Democrat president. We have to do it. So you know the shock of God challenge. What I've been doing is I've been challenging atheists all around the world, all around YouTube, to also on the debate circuit, to answer one simple question. And for 10 years, the atheists have not been able to answer the question. Here's the question. It's a very simple question, but they cannot provide proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. That is the shock of God challenge. Here it is. What proof and evidence can you provide that would finally, at last, prove that atheism is accurate and correct? Do you have any of my atheist friends? We love the atheist, but I'm going to show you a problem with atheism, but first, let's talk to you about Donaldo Trumpus, who I believe is the best president in our lifetime. We have uh, Supreme Court justices that he has put in place that are pro-life so we can overturn the monstrosity and the atrocity of Roe versus Wade. Now I know the Democrat, par the Democrat Party has never met a baby they didn't want to abort in the womb. They love themselves some abortion. But I, as a Christian conservative Republican, uh, believe that we are all created in the image of God. And you know the founders in the Declaration stated that we are endowed by our Creator with the right to life liberty in the pursuit of happiness. Well, if you're going to kill the baby, it has no right to life. So, sorry my Democrat friends, you are on the wrong side of good. You're on the side of evil. So, you have Trump who is being a victim of the deep state. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a deep state which is supported by CNN NBC and uh, did you hear today that I'm making this video 
the IG report came out and Comey, James Comey, the corrupt FBI, the head of the FBI, or way up there, he uh, admitted that he got some facts wrong with the uh, with his investigation of Trump. Well, if it's a wrong fact, it's not not a fact. So it's weird how he says that. You know, with the FISA report, they reported dishonest things to the court so they could spy on Donald Trump. Do you remember when Trump was running for president? And we really got to pick up the speed here. Hope these people get out of the way. That um, Trump was saying that he was uh, being spied on and everyone laughed at him saying he was paranoid and lo and behold it comes out that Trump was being spied on and now as I speak today Trump his uh, ratings his poll numbers have gone up his poll numbers are actually better than Obama's at the same time and Obama wasn't being attacked by the deep state so, I'm going to predict Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. I am going to predict that it will be, this guy is crossing a double line, no bueno. Jeez, this is very dangerous. This guy is a nut going around a corner. We might witness an accident here, folks. It is going to be Donald Trump in my prediction versus Joe Biden. And Donald Trump will defeat Joe Biden. Now, why must we impeach the next Democrat president? Folks, we must impeach the next Democrat president. These nut job Democrats, that's right, I've said it, in the House, Nancy Pelosi. You know, Nancy Pelosi, her district is San Francisco. You know, the land of the fruits and the nuts over there. And um, they actually had to make a phone application, a phone app, that's a GPS map so you can walk around the poop and the crap and the excrement that the druggies are leaving on the street. You actually have to walk around it. There's an app that you can get on your phone Oh wait, let's not walk down this street. There's tons of piles of poop. Let's walk down the other street. And this is what uh, is being done by Nancy Pelosi in her district. So we must impeach the next Democrat president immediately, right when he gets in, start impeachment. I'm sorry, this is the only thing the Democrat Party understands is power. Mark my word, ladies and gentlemen, if we do not impeach the next Democrat president, Mike Pence will go through the same thing. They're going to try to impeach him when, when he runs for president. I really like Mike Pence. Conservative Christian. Look at this. These donkeys right here. Look at this. Just an accident waiting to happen. Speaking of Democrats, you know, there's a reason why the Democrat Party has an ass for their symbol. So, let's talk about now the Shock of God Challenge, and I'm going to bring up something new that I've never said before, that I've been thinking about a lot. I've been wanting to talk about this. The evidence problem that atheists have. Now, we all know that Atheism has no proof and evidence that would show that it's accurate and correct. But I want to show you another thing. There's a problem that the atheists do, how they approach logic. And what they'll do is, let's say they want to go get a hamburger, and they have no evidence, they have no proof, let's say, that that this hamburger they're going to go get at a fast food is going to be as good as the hamburger they had 
the last time they were there, but without any proof and evidence, they will, just based on what they've had before, they will go ahead and order the same hamburger. They don't have empirical proof, follow along with me here, that the hamburger is going to be tasty. It could be uh, poisoned, it could be bad meat, it could, they don't look for empirical proof, but what they do is they basically look at the evidence that they have. I got a downshift here. And they make a decision based on that. When an atheist goes to get in the car, they get all dressed up to go somewhere, even though they really don't have 100% proof that the car is going to start, they really don't. They get all dressed up, they get their shirt and pants on and shoes, and they go up to the car to start the car because they have this belief that the car is going to start based on what they've seen happen in the past but we know they can go out to the car and it could be dead the battery could be dead but you see the atheist doesn't need this empirical proof and evidence to go to the fast food restaurant or empirical proof and evidence to go get dressed up and start the car they do it based on what they know in the past. Now, if we go by what we know in the past, we know, for example, this motorcycle could not create itself. It could not just create itself out of, you know, nothing, just by itself. There has to be an intelligent designer that creates it. But see, the atheists don't use logic when it comes to things like like let's say fish. Do you know fish are designed intelligently by God to get this oxygen out of the water to survive? And the atheist want us to believe that this was just luck. There was no design that the fish just got lucky and evolved that way with no guidance. Right, atheist. The atheists want you to believe that your heart, your lungs, your entire respiratory system, which is miraculous, it is the product of intelligent design. The atheist wants you to believe that that too just came about by luck and chance. Right, atheist. Can you see why the atheists have not been able to conquer the Shaka God challenge. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be making a video in 2020 where yet another year, that's right, another year the atheists fail the Shaka of God challenge. I'm going to be challenging them again next year. Your brain. The atheists believe that your brain, just by luck and chance and no guidance, <laughs> just evolved and just with no guidance, no God. Right, atheist. Can you see why atheists cannot conquer the shock of God challenge? The atheist wants you to believe your inner skeleton just by, <laughs> by luck and chance just evolved and, you know, was formed that way just by luck and chance and absolutely no guidance. Right, atheists. Can you see why atheists are not defeating the shock of God challenge, folks? Got to get up on the speed here. We're going to be going through some awesome twisties. I'm going to show you some stuff. You're going to love this. You know your arteries, just your your veins and your arteries going throughout your body and these veins that supply precious blood. The atheists want you to believe in stupid stuff that all these arteries, your veins, your arterial system, your whole 
insides of your body, which is obviously a product of intelligent design, but no, they want you to believe that it just, we got lucky again. Gee, we're lucky, man. If, if atheists really believe that luck has all this power to do these things, they should be buying lottery tickets every single day. Right, atheists, <laughs> sure it happened. So there's some really weird things. The way atheists approach proof, you really don't have 100% empirical proof of anything. We don't have 100% empirical proof for, you know, like let's say you were standing in front of me. You could even deny that I'm even there. Well, how do I know, Shock, that I'm not just a brain and a scientist vat, and he's pushing these electrodes on my brain to make me think that you're there? You know, you can just keep denying the proof and evidence in front of you, but this is a, a, a problem, and I've been thinking about it, what atheists do they set the bar so high when it comes to God. If God was standing right in front of them, they'd come up with the reason, well, I'm having a delusion, or they'd say something like that. They're, they're always going to have some reason that they can use, that they can say that, you know, God does not exist. So, this is an issue that I was thinking about, is the problem is the atheists set the bar so high for God, but they don't do that. You can't live your life that way. Well, I'm not going to put my shoes on unless I know for sure they're not going to get a hole in them today. I need proof. I'm not going to get in my car and drive it unless I have 100% proof that it's going to go ahead and start for me. And if it doesn't start, unless I have proof of that, I'm not going to even go get in the car. I mean, you know, this is just does not make sense at all. The level, the level of proof that they want is just way too high. Get around this, dude. You don't have this level of proof. Look at those beautiful mountains. You don't have this level of proof for other things. You don't demand this level of proof. So you could show evidence, but look. Look at all these prophecies that came true. And they could deny that. You could always raise the bar higher and higher and keep moving the goalposts and that's the issue. But they don't do this in real life. They don't... Hey, you know what? Here come the twisties. Let's get on it. I think this is the street. They don't do this in real life. Where... You need to have 100% empirical proof of everything. Before you believe in it. Who lives their life that way? I don't know anyone that lives their life that way. Give me something that we have 100% empirical proof of. It's extremely rare where we have 100% empirical proof. All right, let's go. I want to get the pole position here. I don't want this yellow car to go. All right, here we go. Show you guys some stuff. This is a great road. We're making good time. So, let's be honest. If you're an atheist, just once in your life, be honest. I used to be an atheist. I was honest with myself. If I became a Christian, there's more evidence for Christianity than there is for atheism. Atheism has zero evidence. How do I know this? For ten years, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have been challenging atheists to answer the shock of God challenge. And for 10 years, ladies and gentlemen, 
They have failed the challenge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now it's going to be 11 years with 2020 rolling around. Think about it. Let's think as we tap our finger to the camera. What do we have 100% evidence for proof and evidence we certainly don't have it for atheism is there evidence that Jesus Christ is a historical person yes even Richard Dawkins recanted recanted the lie when he said in his book that Jesus never existed in his debate with John Lennox ladies and gentlemen John Lennox said you know Richard I can't believe you said that there's no evidence that Jesus existed. And then Richard Dawkins said, okay, I misspoke, he did exist. Not that Richard Dawkins brings Jesus into existence or out of existence from what he says. These railroad tracks are really bad right here, so. Gonna go kinda slow here. Here we go. It is so beautiful, actually kind of chilly. So, what do we have 100% empirical proof of? Do we have 100% empirical proof that gravity is gonna stay consistent on Earth? We really don't. Here's another stupid thing that uh, atheists do. It's really, really stupid. They take this high level of proof and they make it so high that even things that you know exist do not exist in the atheist weird, bizarre world. I was gonna say of logic, but atheists don't use logic. Let me give you an example. See those bikers right there in the 10 speed? There's two of them. Do I have any evidence whatsoever that they have a cell phone on them? No. I have zero evidence that they have a cell phone on them. Now, follow along logically. If you're an atheist, just once follow along. Just once. So if, they, if I have zero evidence that they have a cell phone, does that mean that there's zero chance that they have a cell phone? Huh? Huh? Let's think logical. If you said yes, if you're an atheist and you said yes, that means there's zero chance that they have a cell phone. You answered wrong. Right now my Christian subscribers are saying shock. There is a chance that the 10 speed riders had a cell phone because shock. We know that absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. What does that mean? Absence of evidence means I have no evidence that the bikers have a cell phone in their fanny pack or their backpack, whatever. But because I have absence of evidence, that does not mean there's evidence of absence. It doesn't mean that's evidence that the cell phone does not exist. In fact, let's take it to the extreme. Let's take it to the extreme. Even though there's all types of evidence of the existence of God, you can go to, oh, i got to tell you guys something really good. There was a website, shockofgod.com, but it was over $1,000 to buy it. And I'm like, man, why would someone get shockofgod.com when, <laughs> when I'm shock of God? Unless it's like the shockofgod.com, like people 
come to know God personally and it's like a shock, right? Or something like that. And I've been trying to get shockofgod.com for the longest time. And ladies and gentlemen, I got it. I finally got the domain shockofgod.com and if you go to that domain, that website, you will see, and look at it, you will see 20 arguments for God's existence. Do you know if you type in, go to how much the value of the domains are and if you type in shockofgod.com, it'll say mine's worth over $1,000. And if you type in theamazingatheist.com, it's like $700 or $600. <laughs> See, people don't value atheism as much as Christianity. Anyways, I have no evidence that there's a cell phone in this vehicle in front of me. Does that mean there's zero chance Let's see. Can I see anything? Nope. No cell phone. That I can see. So even though I got up close to the vehicle and I looked in and I can see no cell phone, does that mean there's no cell phone? No. I would have to look in the entire vehicle, even under the seat where my cell phone always slides under accidentally. So how can an atheist say God doesn't exist when they haven't looked even at the other 99% of this universe and beyond it in the spiritual realm. It is arrogance for an atheist to say that God does not exist when they have not looked through the other 99% of the universe and also the spiritual realm. I mean, they don't even have the right to suggest it. It's ridiculous. It's even more ridiculous than if I said, there's no cell phone in that vehicle in front of me. People would say, shock, who the hell are you to say there's no cell phone in that vehicle? Have you looked in the vehicle? Do you know the person in the vehicle? No. So that's another stupid thing that atheists do, folks, is they will say absence of evidence is evidence of absence. This is not true. So I am laying down the gauntlet. I'm challenging atheists to answer the shock of God challenge. Do you know that kangaroo guy? Atheism is unstoppable. Well, I stopped it. He failed to answer the shock of God challenge. The amazing atheist was not so amazing. He failed to answer it. Look right below this video. You'll see him on video failing the shock of God challenge. All right, let's get on it. Very windy. The Atheist Experience Show for 10 years has been failing the Shock of God Challenge. Do you know if you, my faithful viewer, if you call the Atheist Experience Show and you ask them what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is accurate and correct? This is what they're going to say. They're going to evade like atheists always do. They never confront the question ever. You'll see them below this video evading but let's say you did that. You know what they're going to tell you? Well last time they said look there's a <laughs> There's this moron on YouTube. They, that's me. They're trying to hurt my widow feeling. And he keeps saying we haven't answered the question. But we have. I've answered it in the blog. I've answered it blah, blah, blah. I've answered it here. You know what? He hasn't answered it. The Atheist Experience Show still has not answered the question. Because the next thing that the Atheist Experience Show says is this. Atheism doesn't have a burden of proof. It's the rejection of claims. Well, rejecting something doesn't mean that that thing you're rejecting is wrong. 
I reject that the sky is blue. It doesn't mean that it's not blue. Someone can reject that the sun's in the sky, warming the earth. It doesn't mean that it's not. So you got to do something better. You've got to give an argument. The Atheist Experience Show, would you guys do me a favor? Click share below this video and send this to the Atheist Experience Show just once. Let's see if they can answer the question. Please, I beg of you, click share and send this to any atheist on YouTube. How do you do it? You click share and then you can put their YouTube channel in it or you can cut and paste it. So folks, we've learned, what did we learn in this video? We should pray for Kanye West, seriously. Pray for Kanye West. Now, I ain't saying he's a bold Christian, but we don't want to be a false Christian. And then also, ladies and gentlemen, support the next impeachment of the Democrat president. We must impeach you. You must support the impeachment of the next Democrat president. We must impeach. And of course, click share below this video and send this to your sweet, cuddly, huggable atheist friends. And let's see if they can answer the shock of God challenge. Folks, it's going to be 11 years that atheists have been failing. The shock of God challenge. You know, Christians have evidence for God's existence. We're getting on the freeway. Let me just go through some evidences. These are very good arguments for the existence of God. There are zero arguments showing that atheism is accurate and correct. But let's go through some. The teleological argument, also pronounced the teleological argument. Do you know that things have to be balance just right by intelligent design in order for us to have life on this planet. We were just a little bit closer to the sun, we'd fry. If we were a little bit further, we'd freeze. You know, just amazing. Gravity. If gravity was stronger, there'd be no life. We could be like a lot stronger. We'd be like pancakes. If it was not as strong, we'd be floating out into the universe. All right, this is it. We're getting on the high-speed freeway. What about the cosmological argument? Everything that exists has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore it has a cause. Well, if the universe began to exist, matter, material, energy couldn't create it because those things were not there. But God is spirit. It makes sense that something spiritual created the universe. What about the historicity of Jesus Christ? Jesus is a real historical person. What about the appearances after Jesus died and resurrected? All types of folks said they witnessed him resurrected. They believed it so much that they were willing to die for the fact of that belief. What about women being the first at Jesus' tomb? The other men that had witnessed Jesus' crucifixion, they ran and they were afraid. The women were the first to arrive at Jesus' tomb. This low status of women of that time Witnessing the risen Jesus Christ adds more credibility to the historical fact because the historical fact that Jesus had risen because any false story surely would have had the men arriving at the tomb. The immediate proclamation that Jesus Christ had risen. People were already saying Jesus Christ had risen immediately after he had risen. It's not like the game of telephone where you say one thing and over time it changes. No, immediately 
they were proclaiming Jesus rose from the dead. Paul even says, look, you can go talk to the witnesses. They're still alive. The people that were witnesses to this were still alive. You could go talk to them. So it's not like the game of telephone. What about the voluntary suffering? Would you die for a lie if you knew it was a lie? The disciples believed that Jesus died and then he rose again and that it wasn't a lie. They believed it so much so that they were willing to die for the truth of that belief. And then of course on top of that, Jesus' body, his dead body, cannot be found. It's mysteriously missing even though there was this huge stone put over his tomb and the tomb was rolled back and the women were so frail and fragile they couldn't have done it. But you know the angels that uh, met the women there, you know what they said? They said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Come and see where he had laid. And they showed the place where Jesus had had laid down when he they had laid him down when he was dead. So Merry Christmas to you guys. It is going to be an awesome year. I don't see the atheist um, succeeding in answering the shock of God challenge. I really don't. Look below this video to see the list. I love you guys. God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus is returning soon.